Thanks for joining us on AM Today. It's 26 past 8. This is a live shot of Auckland. High 15 degrees today, low of 6. Showers clearing by midday. It's taking 24 minutes from Silverdale and 56 minutes from Helensville. Good luck with that. Traffic updates thanks to our partner Battery Zone, your local battery expert. Time now for our panel of the day, historian Peter Lynham and PR consultant Sarah Sparks. Morena to both of you. Lovely to have you with us. A big week, Sarah. Um, te Reo has been at the forefront and 50 years today since that petition went to Parliament. It is a momentous day. Huge. And the seeds were sown, you know, and um, I, we always say that we stand on the shoulders of our tupuna and they had a plan. And it's just, um, it's a day of celebration and it's also a day of contemplation. We can be doing so much more, but here we are and uh, I was at M9 uh, last week on Friday and it was just amazing listening to all the facado of our people who have been on their language journey and how it changes people's hearts and mindsets as well. So it's a great thing. And I do think, Peter, it's not being too scared to have a go. It's not something to be afraid of. Uh, I remember my nana telling me that um, te reo was was banned in school, that, that actually some of the children would get sticks around the legs for speaking te reo, and I cannot believe that. It seems incomprehensible. We've come far, but not far enough. Well, one of the tragedies, you know, was that during the 1950s and 60s, many Māori parents discouraged their children from speaking te reo because they were so anxious that they would make it in the Pākehā world. I mean, we are so much richer for recognising our biculturalism. Uh, for people like me who have a natural tendency to get in chaos with language, I learned, I, I did a course on Te Reo um, back in the 1990s. Um, I also did it at much the same time I was trying to learn German and New Testament Greek, and the three are all in a tangle in my mind. But oh, What were but, you thinking, Peter? <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to be good at languages. I've always wanted to be good at languages. And But the extraordinary thing is that people you would never think of using Te Reo now use it with just great confidence. Absolutely. And, you know, Dame Nader, when she said kia ora, I mean, that yeah. was it. They yeah. talk, we talk about the disruptors. The visionaries, the disruptors, and the navigators. And that is the pathway we're on. Yeah. So it's a great thing for Aotearoa. Yeah, it is. Uh, we've seen uh, emotional scenes from the UK this, this week with the passing of Queen Elizabeth II. And, uh, your thoughts, Peter? It's uh, 70 years of quite an incredible monarch. Yes, and uh, Sarah and I were talking about it before and reflecting on the fact that what held that monarchy together was the Queen's own deep sense of faith, of a deep, profound religious commitment to serve. Most unusual, you know, the typical monarch doesn't think of themselves as a servant. They think of themselves of all the power that they've got. This was a very profoundly different approach. I thought she was very iconic in terms of, you know, from a kaupapa driven perspective. It wasn't so much about the personality, she was about serving the people and because of that she connected with all sorts of people, all sorts of uh, nationalities, countries and, and all those within Great Britain. So that is her legacy. Mm. And, but, but you know what's coming next, it's that Republic debate, Peter. Of course, of course, and it is inevitable. Uh, but the intriguing thing I, to me is watching in Britain at the moment Moment where they've had to very carefully ensure that Scotland has given its place because that's the first great debate is can the United Kingdom survive a change of monarchy mm -hmm. where the, the Queen has been such a symbol of unity in a very fragile uh, state. You might find that in the passing of the Queen things, uh, people come together, you know, on, on the grander scale. Yeah, indeed. Historian Peter Lynham and PR consultant Sarah Sparks, thanks for your time this morning. Good to see you. All right, it's 8.30, news time. Morena, a severely damaged ambulance and another crumbled car have been left strewn across State Highway 1 south of Cambridge. 